Welcome back to Plant Field Mother Hustler. Today's video is all about dun 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 Satan. I'm glad to reassure you there's nothing evil about this recipe. What is Satan? You may be asking. Well, it's a wheat based meat alternative that's great and super versatile. You can use it a hundred different ways and a hundred different recipes. And I know that even if you knew what Satan was, you probably would have no clue how to use it much less even think about trying to make it. Right here, right now, I'm gonna bust the myth that doing this at home is difficult or daunting. In fact, it's really no more difficult than doing boxed brownies or boxed cakes. In the description box down below, I'm gonna include a general recipe that I followed and tell you what seasonings I used. You can tailor this to your own liking. Um, you can't really screw it up too bad. It doesn't need to be a real science. As long as you use the main in general ingredients, you're gonna get a similar outcome. Let's get started. All you're gonna need to make the basic seitan is gonna be chickpea flour and vital wheat gluten, and then just water. When you combine these two with the water, it makes your dough and you can do it just plain like that. Otherwise, if you want to season it up to taste like chicken or use a Mediterranean flavor profile or Asian or Mexican food profile, you can use whatever seasonings you would use in your normal cooking to flavor those along. For my recipes today, I'm going to use a general chicken flavor profile and then a Mexican taco seasoning flavor profile as well. To make your life a hundred times easier before you even start cooking, I would get whatever seasonings your flavor profiles require and just throw them each in a separate bowl or if you're just gonna do the whole batch in one flavor, just get your seasonings ready ahead of time and set them aside because that's going to take most of your time, measuring those out and getting those ready to go. As you can see, I've already done that here, so I'm ready to go there. To start this whole process, I'm going to get my Vital Wheat Gluten Flour in the bowl. There is a recipe on the back of this Bob's Red Mill. I usually get Bob's Red Mill. You can find it almost anywhere now and it's typically non-GMO. As you can see on the back, they do give you a recipe for seitan, but in my opinion, it's way more difficult than it needs to be. So here is your basic, basic version. With the wheat gluten, I'm just gonna open it up and measure out one cup. Our general one cup of vital wheat gluten, toss that in there. And then we're gonna mix it with this chickpea flour, again, Bob's Red Mill. And I'm just gonna use the same one cup, but I'm just gonna fill it up halfway. So I like to do a one cup vital wheat gluten to a half a cup chickpea flour. You could really use any other flour too if you wanted. Um, chickpea just works the best and it's got um, a bunch of protein in it as well to add to the 70-80% protein that the vital, vital wheat gluten already has. Now that we have our one cup vital wheat gluten flour and our half cup chickpea flour in here, all you're gonna do is add water until it becomes a nice consistency dough. I just start with one cup of water and just pour it in a little bit at a time and mix until it all comes together. The sun is coming up again, looking like it's gonna be a problem, cause I'd be lying to you if I said, this ain't a thing and I've been looking for a new one, I keep on waiting for the week. See this is coming together now, but it's still a little bit dry and there's still some stuff along the edges. So I'm gonna add a little bit more, which will probably be the rest of my cup of water. I'm gonna do a little bit at a time because I don't wanna have to add any extra flour in case it gets too wet. All right, so it's all come together now. It looks kind of wet, but it's still sticking together. It's not liquidy by any 
means. And this is exactly what you want. Now you don't want to mix it too much because you're going to do more mixing once you add your seasoning. But I kind of just pressed mine into a little dough ball. And since I've got two different seasonings that I'm going to do, I'm just going to split this in half. So I've split mine in half into two different balls. I'm just gonna take one of each balls and put them in their bowls of seasoning. So this is my bowl of my taco seasoning mixture. And it looks like a lot for this little bit amount of dough, but that's the thing. Seitan's pretty bland. If you don't add seasoning, that's what's gonna make it enjoyable. So in my opinion, you can't really overdo it on the seasonings unless it's salt, then it kind of becomes impalatable. I'm just gonna put this dough in there and roll it around and mix it in. And use your hands and just work it throughout the whole thing. You don't just want to coat the outside because then when you go to cut into it, it's just going to be bland. So I've done a lot of mixing and it's kind of grabbed all the seasoning I think it's going to take. So I'm going to go ahead and dump out the rest of the seasoning or you could just save it in a little glass jar and reuse it the next time around. All right, I've washed and dried my hands because I've got the dry seasonings on the first little ball. Now I'm gonna throw the second little ball into my second batch of dry seasonings and just do the same thing. It's all coated. Now I'm gonna kind of tear it apart and turn it inside out a little bit. That way I can get seasoning on the inside and everywhere. So this one's kind of grabbed all the seasoning it's going to take as well. So now I have my two balls in the dry seasons. I'm going to also add a couple of wet ingredients just to really ump the flavor. So for the taco seasoning blend, I'm going to add a little bit of liquid smoke. This is like the holy grail when you're working with these bland meat alternatives as people think they need to be. Once you pack all that flavor in, they're really great. Liquid smoke, a tiny bit goes a long way. You don't want to overdo it on this. So I'm really just going to do like two drops. In fact, I'm going to use the cap to measure because Now that I've got my liquid ingredient, I'm just gonna keep turning this inside out, kind of tearing it and pulling it together, kneading it maybe, I guess you would call it. I'm no cook, so I just call it tearing and putting it back together. You're gonna wanna do this quite a few times until it becomes a little more firm there's no real right or wrong way to do this. Just want to pull it apart from the middle and wrap it around the back. Okay. This one's pretty good. I'm just going to pinch the parts that I tore together back here. I'm going to make this into like a little loaf. This is the beautiful thing about seitan is in this process you can make it into whatever you want you could pull this apart and make little nugs for like little chicken nugs or you could roll little long pieces for like fajita style you can make it a loaf and then just do thin deli slices when it's all done okay so Got my little loaf going on, dough, loaf of dough. I'm just gonna let that sit in the bowl for a while. And then for my chicken flavored seitan, I'm going to add 
some liquid aminos. This really just tastes like soy sauce. It's just a way healthier version of it. Here, I'll show you guys. Liquid amino soy sauce alternative. This you can be a little more generous with. So I'm gonna do a couple dashes of that. And this sounds really weird, but it really adds some creaminess and depth of texture when you add peanut butter. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that as well. Not a lot, just a little scoop. This peanut butter is gonna need to be worked in a little bit more with a fork because it's obviously not liquid. All right, this one's gonna be a little messier because of the peanut butter. But we're just gonna back right in. I'm gonna fold the peanut butter inside. Okay, so I made another little loaf with this. This one got a little messier because I had the peanut butter in there. So I just washed my hands, forming this into what I want it to be. And then I'm gonna throw that back in the bowl as well. You're just gonna wanna let these sit for about a half hour to an hour, but I don't have the time or the patience for that. So I'm probably just gonna let these sit for like a half an hour to 45 minutes and then move on to cooking them. While we wait for that, I'll show you what I put into my seasonings for the taco seasoning. I just used regular taco seasoning you can get anywhere. And then I put some new nutritional yeast in there. It adds a cheesy type of a flavor. I also used Trader Joe's chili and lime powder. You could just use regular chili powder if you wanted. I also added some garlic to that and salt as well because this taco seasoning isn't very salty. And then for the chicken, seasonings. The best key ingredient in this is also from Trader Joe's. It's their vegan chickenless seasoning, which is awesome. And then to add more to that, I did some onion powder, some savory seasonings, some mustard powder, pepper, and turmeric. And then again, after those were incorporated, I did the liquid smoke for the taco seasonings. And then for the chicken, the liquid aminos and just some peanut butter. You can do whatever type of seasonings you would normally use in your cooking. Little Miss Esme just woke up from her nap to join us. And I realized as she was sleeping and I was cleaning up, I went back to my notes and you don't actually need to let that dough rest for nearly as long as I said. A good five, 10 minutes should do the trick, but mine's been resting for quite some time and we're gonna go ahead and move on with it anyway. And I'm sure, like I said, since it's not a science, everything will be just fine. So for the second part of this recipe, a lot of people will tell you to make your own broth to add even more flavor but I don't have time for that and that's just not the way I roll. So all you're gonna need for this recipe is just some vegetable broth. I typically don't measure how much I put in there, but for this video, I'll just go ahead and measure it out. Forget that, I'm just probably gonna use this whole box, which is 48 fluid ounces. fluid ounces only filled it up about half the way so I'm going to add some water to that as well okay that looks about right I did two cups of water added to that then all you're gonna do is get your heat turned up high and let this come to a boil I'm gonna add some salt to this. Maybe it'll help it boil faster. I know it works with water. I have no clue if it works with broth, but it can't hurt, right? 
Now you could boil these loaves separately, but I'm not really too worried about the flavors combining and all that. So I'm just gonna put them both in there. Just gonna go ahead and make sure that they're not touching. You're gonna wanna keep these simmering on a very low simmer for about 45 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my timer for 45 minutes. And then we'll come back and flip them and let them sit for a little bit longer. Now you could keep the top on here when you're letting it simmer. I don't, I always just keep it off. That way I don't have to worry about it building up heat and somehow boiling over. While we're letting that simmer and I've got the timer on, we're gonna go get this girl some milk and then we'll be back. Ready? Once it's boiling, you're gonna wanna turn it down to a simmer, a very low simmer. All right, so our 45 minute timer went off and the seitan dough should have raised to the top and now you're gonna wanna, yeah, you tell them. Now you're gonna wanna flip it over and let it cook for about 15 more minutes on the other side. All right, it's been 15 minutes. Wardrobe change for Esme, she just took a little bath. So I'm gonna set her down and get this seitan out and show you what it's all about and what it's looking like. So your loaves are gonna come out like this. Once you put a fork into them, there should be some give. Um, you'll know it's done. You can either eat it plain just like this because technically it's already cooked or you can slice it up into strips or cube it um, and you can fry it up in a pan or you can throw it in the oven to bake it a little bit longer. Maybe try to get some crisp on it or you can even use an air fryer. You could deep fry it. You can treat it just like you would chicken. Since I'm gonna use this taco seasoned one in like bowls and maybe some quesadillas, I'm gonna just go ahead and cube it up because that's gonna be the easiest way for me to pan fry it and then throw it in the bowls or the quesadillas. Gonna hit you up and tell you that I want ya Cause I just wanna feel like this again. Oh, oh, oh. All I wanna do is feel awesome Yeah, yeah, yeah All I wanna do is feel awesome Yeah, yeah, yeah Baby, can you make me feel awesome? Up and down, side to side And then back and forth Up all night again and then this traditional chicken seasoned one, I'm gonna cut up into strips because I'm gonna use it in like a zucchini noodle bowl with spaghetti sauce and spinach. I'm just gonna probably lay it on top of that. And then I'll probably also use it in like a quinoa bowl with like some potatoes and veg, just lay it on top of that as well. Left and right and then whoa, whoa, oh, oh, oh. Up and down, side to side and then back and forth, up all night again. Again. There you have it. I've got some cubed taco seasoned seitan and then some strip cut chicken seasoned seitan. I would wait until it cools down a little bit to cut it because if you do it right away like I did, it might get a little sloppy to slice through. It slices much easier if you wait, but I don't have time for that today. So I just did it and threw it in this container to cool. So I'm just gonna let it cool in here and then throw it in the fridge and it should be good to go for at least five or so days. Hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Making seitan really is as easy as seasoning some flour mixture dough, letting it rust and boiling it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.